Hello again, YouTube. Well, it's late. The aquarium lights are off. Almost time for bed. And at bedtime, what do you hear? You hear a story. Well, here's my story about Marine Buffalo. Okay, so this is actually only going to be part one of the story about the marine velvet outbreak in my tank. In the beginning, there was a tank, and it had a ton of awesome fish in the tank, and I had only one more fish that I wanted. I'm a fan of tangs, and I walked in my local uh, fish store. And I saw a blonde naso tang. Now this is a tang I had wanted for a very long time. So uh, I talked to the owner. I'm a good customer. He worked me a deal that I couldn't pass up, and I brought him home. He looked great in the tank. He was eating, um, you know, all the things that. We check and make sure that it's a healthy fish before we put it on to our show tank. And he was. I put him in with the tank, or put him in the tank, and he got along with all of the other tangs. They didn't bother him, he didn't bother them. Uh, even my hippo tang, no issues, everything was great. And that was for about a week and a half or two weeks. Then all of a sudden, he started acting a little strange, stopped eating, and the next day he was dead. Well, that sucked. But not as bad as what happened next. The next morning I wake up and I find my coal tang that I got as a uh, reminder of my trip to Hawaii inside or half inside uh, my rose bubble tip anemone and okay that's pretty weird but I'm not gonna panic quite yet over the next couple days uh, I lost the antheus I lost the cardinals I lost um, oh, too many fish to even count and this was all in the course of about two days. Well, at this point, I knew it had to be marine velvet. I went online and I saw some symptoms of marine velvet in my fish. Uh, one was they were staying out of the light. So as you can see here, they were hiding behind the rocks. They were staying out of the light. Um, Another thing that they were doing was that they were swimming directly into the power head. And this was to relieve some of the pain from the uh, marine velvet in their gills. So these are some clear signs. Now, I was keeping an eye on the tank, but I wasn't keeping a really super close eye on the fish. Uh, they were definitely acting weird, but they were still eating. I wasn't sure what was going on. But after I decided it was marine velvet, um, I tried garlic. That was intelligent. Um, I went online and uh, I don't know what I was thinking. They said garlic. I went with garlic and uh, more fish died. So finally, I decided, okay, this is stupid. What do I need to do for real? Um, anyone that tells you you can treat ick or green velvet with garlic um, is not somebody I would taking, be taking advice from. So anyway, um, so I needed a quarantine tank, and I needed a quarantine tank fast. Um, I went on a Facebook thread that uh, was buying selling equipment and I found a uh, Red C-130 and um, immediately went over there, picked it up, bought it, 
Um, told him I was using it for a quarantine tank, really nice quarantine tank, but it was going to go downstairs and I wanted it to look nice. And the price was right. So I set it up. You guys have seen that tank. You'll see it some more in this video. And there you go. Now, by the time I got the tank put in and set up, I had seven fish left, I think. Let's count them. I had a my purple tang, which was the one I was most worried about, hardest fish to replace. Um, I had a pair of breeding uh, flame, not flame angels. I did have a flame angel. That's number two. Um, I had two flame clowns, so that's four. Um, let's see, who else is still in there? My lawnmower blenny, that's five. And a hawk, long nosed hawkfish, that's six. And I had a watchman goby, that's seven. And I had a coral beauty, that's eight. Okay, eight. Eight fish survived. Now, I started dosing copper right away. And I'm going to get into dosing copper in a little bit. Why I chose copper, what, how it treats. That's going to be the next part here. But for right now, I have eight fish in my quarantine tank. Um, I chose to put, it's a big bio load for such a small tank. So I chose to take some of the live rock out of my tank and put it in the quarantine tank. Now, all the fish are in there and everything's going good. I dosed the copper and the deaths slow down. Um, I think I started dosing too late for my uh, blue tang. I don't even think I said there was a blue tang in the tank. Okay, there was also a uh, that uh, why am I why am I spacing out on this, guys? Um, pallet fish, pallet tang, dory, uh, hippo tang. Thank you. Um, hippo tang, I don't think I treated in time. It passed. Um, and the watchman goby also passed within the first week of treatment. Um, actually, within the first couple days of treatment. So... Um, everyone that's in the quarantine tank now uh, survived that initial outbreak. Um, so we have the tank, we've dosed the copper, and everything seems to be doing okay except I'm getting these huge ammonia spikes. And I'm not sure why there's a protein skimmer on it, live rock on it. And then I realized, and this is where we're going to start talking about dosing copper. Um, copper's poison. It's like, I don't know what that was. Dishwasher, I think. Um, I'll, let me get closer to the camera when I say this. Copper is poison. There's no two ways about it. Copper's poison. It's like chemotherapy for cancer patients. In chemo, the idea is that you basically are poisoning the body with the hopes that the cancer cells have a faster metabolism, they absorb the poison faster, and they die before the body can die. And copper is basically the exact same thing. It is poison. That's why you can't put any of your inverts in with a copper tank because they have such a uh, susceptibility to this poison that they die with trace amounts so okay see this is why it's a two-part video um, you're dosing copper and you have to get the level to about five now anything less than five and the poison is probably not strong enough to kill marine velvet anything more than about five and you're probably going to kill the fish so the idea is you need enough poison to kill the parasite but not so much poison that you kill the fish that's why certain fish that are more susceptible like wrasses 
it's very difficult to treat with copper because usually if you add enough copper to kill the parasite, you've also killed the fish. There are always exceptions, but that's the general rule. So, I started dosing copper. Um, and I was getting these huge ammonia spikes like I was talking about. And the ammonia spikes were basically because the copper was killing everything on my live rock. Not the bacteria on my live rock. Um, it was killing the algae on my live rock. It was killing um, the coca pods that are all over the live rock. It was killing everything within the live rock and that's what was causing these huge ammonia spikes. I was having to do 80% water changes every day and this is, you know, 35 gallons give or take tank. <clears throat> so, anyway, that was expensive. So, I'm doing water changes basically every day for the first two weeks. I'm going crazy. Um, but after everything cycled through and died off the live rock, then everything stapled out. The tank kind of cycled and has been fine since. So, um, that's a lesson to everybody out there. The tank's been, in, the fish have been in quarantine about a month. They've been in copper for about three weeks and off copper for about a week. And the reason why I took them off copper at week three was my purple tang, which was the one fish I did not want to lose. It was my dream fish. Did not want to lose that purple tang. Um, it started getting lateral Lyme disease. So I start researching lateral Lyme disease, like marine velvet wasn't enough. Well, through my research, I discover that, like I said, copper is poison. Purple tangs tend to get lateral Lyme disease when they're stressed, when they're not having a good diet, uh, basically environmental factors. So you can see the purple tang right now. It's got lateral Lyme disease in a bad, bad way. So I um, get some uh, copper absorbing medication um, from Seachem, the same one that made the copper treatment. I put that in the water to get every ounce of copper out. I filter with carbon. I do everything in my power to get this water with no trace of copper in it. And once I do that, I start noticing things. I start noticing that my pair of um, flame clowns start uh, spawning again. And I notice that um, the purple tang is getting much better. So I notice all of these things and um, that's when it really hit me how poisonous the copper is and, and how it just nothing in the tank likes it. A couple more weeks go by and I start noticing coralline algae coming on the live rock and other algae showing up on the live rock again. So now the tank is kind of maturing a little bit. It's been going, it's up for over two months and everything looks like it's doing a whole lot better. So that's where we are today. The fish are still in quarantine. They'll remain in quarantine for another few weeks. Uh, everything that I've seen online says the absolute max limit, or not max limit, the minimum that you keep everything in a tank fallow is about 76 days. Now that's for a particular strain of ick, but um, I've already had the fish out of the tank for two months. So what difference does it make if they're out of the tank another two weeks in order to get that 76 days? It falls 
when the kids are in spring break, it'll be a good, exciting thing to do to put the fish back in the tank. So that's where we currently sit. Um, like I said, we've got about two weeks left and then we'll come part two of this video. So right now we're in a holding pattern, but the marine velvet is cured. There have been no signs in the tank. It's been without copper for about a month. And um, so let's review. One, quarantine all of your fish for a month, period. It doesn't matter if they're eating. It doesn't matter if they look healthy. Does not matter. Quarantine. 20 years I didn't quarantine. Never had an outbreak. I got cocky. I got stupid. And like you'll see um, <laughs> YouTube videos from uh, well, one of them I can think of is uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank. Um, did a video a couple months before I got hit with marine velvet. Actually, I guess it was about a year or two before, but I watched it a couple months before. Um, a bullet in the chamber, and there you go. He got hit with Marine Velvet 2, very similar story. Um, almost every YouTuber that I watch has gotten hit with Marine Velvet because they didn't quarantine. They let their personal history cloud the fact that everybody says you're going to get hit with it. You will get hit with it. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year you'll get hit with marine velvet if you don't quarantine. Um, number two, copper is poison, period. That's why it kills the parasites. So when you're dosing copper, you have to keep the level high enough to kill parasites, but low enough not to kill the fish. It's around five. Um, you have to test the copper with the copper test kit. Um, that's how you cure whether it's ick or whether it is marine velvet um, there are other treatments for marine velvet but copper was the simplest easy to find I was in a hurry did it quickly it worked so that's it for this video it's a longer video um, I hope that you learned something from it uh, you know, like I said, this is just one story on YouTube of Marine Velvet, but it's my story. And uh, I don't necessarily hope you enjoyed it, but I hope you learned something from it. So uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to do part two of this video. And in part two, we're going to talk about um, what fish that I have left in my keeping, which ones might I decide to rehome and what my plans are for how to, I want to restock this tank. I'm still working on that. I'll share that with you guys in the next uh, update on the Marine Velvet. But um, for right now, I uh, hope you have a wonderful night. It's time to feed the corals. And um, good night.